what I would call the babies, you know, in Navratri right now, and the babies who are fighting for their rights and protesting um, with their shakti um, on um, not having to wear hijabs. Now, you know, I, I see, I'm, I'm hearing the world, there's, there's so much support. Uh, the bottom line is, is are the protests actually going to be of any benefit? Is there going to be a regime change? Do you think? Um, is it heading there? All right, let me, let me, sure. Noise? Let me answer your question. I know that country very well. I have lots of friends there. And I've yeah. served in certain assignments where we uh, coordinated our actions very closely. I've seen women in France, I think in Germany, in the United States of the Muslim community, in Hungary, protesting because they were denied the right to wear the hijab. In Iran, they are protesting because they are being forced to wear the hijab. So it's two different perspectives. And what we are seeing, ma'am, if it becomes a people's movement, what brought the Shah down was a people's movement. I was your ambassador. I was in my country's ambassador for over five years in Sudan. What brought Omar al-Bashir, who, by the way, was a great friend of mine, He's now in jail awaiting a trial by the International Criminal Court. And in a Sudanese jail, they haven't handed him over yet. What brought him down was a people's movement. Burkina Faso did a people's movement. And people come to the streets. We've seen this in Algeria. We've, you know, the Arab Spring, etc., etc. So I can tell you that the Iranian regime is running scared. We are seeing visuals of people being beaten up, etc., etc. It's not going to stop. You cannot impose a doctrine that you say is 1400 years old on people living in 2022. We have to look forward, not backward. You know, there are some of my friends, again, from the country that keeps fighting with us. They talk of recreating riyasat Medina, the new Medina. So I asked them, I said, you're setting your clock back 1400 years. We are all racing to the future. You are regressing to a primitive tribalism rooted in the past. Don't you realize what you're doing? And then they sort of say, well, you know, but this, that, and the other. I don't want to get into a religious discussion with you. Yeah. But the important thing is that we in India, the state has no religion. I do. You do. Everybody does. You're at liberty, but the state doesn't. We don't enforce our views on anybody. At the same time, we say you respect everybody. So in Iran, if it becomes a people's movement, and it shows signs of becoming one, there won't be regime change, but there will be modification of existing laws. Mm. That's what I see happening. Well, I hope and pray there is some change. Um, that there is no violence. We'd like to see the violence subside. Sure. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Those are our kids. You know, this is the age of the internet, of instant communication. Mm. And we see what uh, women in America and England and India, how freely they roam around, etc. They Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, they're at nightclub. Let me tell you a little story. This is uh, many years ago when I was ambassador to Poland. We had at a dinner and my counterpart from one of the Islamic countries was there. And my daughter called and it was about nine o'clock in the evening in Warsaw. So... Uh, she couldn't reach her mother, so she called me and I said, yeah, sure, darling, go ahead, right ahead. So this person from the Islamic country said, who was that? I said, that was my daughter. And she was, it is three o'clock in the morning in New Delhi. And she was asking for permission to visit a nightclub with some of her girlfriends. So this person looked at me in absolute horror. I said, three o'clock in the morning, going to a nightclub? I said, sure, what's wrong with it? And she wants to go, she's got her friends and you know, they'll have fun, it's a safe place. He said, well, in my country, we would have, first, we would not have permitted a daughter to go out. Second, if at all, the model, the morality police would have nabbed her and beaten her black and blue. So I said, who are you to deny human rights to that person? She wants to have fun. She does. That's India. But it's very difficult. I know that guy deep inside wanted his country to follow a system similar to mine, but he didn't dare say it. So this is the kind of restriction you impose on people and they will revolt. Ultimately, what do we want, ma'am? You, as a daughter, you're of Indian origin, you live in England, you want the choice of freedom 
and you want the freedom of choice. Mm. That's all that every human being wants. That. I mean, the United States, for all its warts and freckles, still is the gold standard. You know, I tell my Chinese friends, they say, you're 1.4 billion. Tomorrow, if the super senior guy says, all right, no more visas, anybody can come and emigrate to the United States. I say, you're 1.4 billion, except five or six chaps. We take the first available flight to go and settle there. So would most Indians, so would Europeans, so would Africa. Mm. But it is. It is a beacon for all of us. You know, it's Miss Liberty holding aloft her torch beside the Golden Gate. Give me your poor, your downtrodden, whatever, your hungry, tempest tossed, etc. I'll take care. But that is the, mm. the legend. And that has been to a very, forget about what these fellows are trying to do across the world. But that is the, the ideal, that is the goal, that is the motto that inspires, so inspired both our children who live in the United States. Not that they are not free in India, but they were economic migrants in the sense they found a better lifestyle there. So they've gone. Good luck to them. I can't. I'm too old for one. And second, I'm too deeply rooted. I'm too deeply committed to my mother. I can't go away from her. So these are issues that, you know, will happen. And in Iran, I... I'm fairly confident. I've seen this during the Shah's time. I've seen this in many countries where I've been, that the regime shows great flexibility. And the Cubans did it too. They became very flexible. And sometimes a change of personality is required. So the top man will say, look, I'm not well. They'll declare that he's got some disease or the other. And somebody else will come who will follow a more moderate line. Moderate in terms of not being so dogmatic. Mm -hmm. True. So it's going to happen. I see that coming. I've lived long enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, this this um, example of what's going on in Iran is something that I'm sure there's quietly there's women around the world in other countries. I, I know I have a lot of, of friends in India who, you know, do things not that not because they want to, but they feel. Um, they just have to, right? Um, and I, I really do wish um, that they, uh, the Iran situation is an example to other countries as well. What do you feel like um, in a, other countries, the women get together and they have the strength to do the same if, if need be? You know, of course, no, sure. Ultimately, it's freedom. You all want freedom and we respect everybody's right to freedom. And we worship our women in India. We put ah, these few cases of this, that, and the other. We deal with it. Yeah. But by and large, we respect our women. Yeah. I'm talking so about that. No the, the women because, again, they, you know, a lot of the times they don't want to be behind the Buddha, as they say. Um, but because of the, the, the male in the family, they, they, um, they have to. Um, but if it was their the male doesn't wear parda. The male should also wear parda if he's serious about it. Then nobody will see anybody else. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we'll call it parda stan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's um, yeah, that that that's my um, I hope this is an example to the world. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanwa.